what we're going to look at at this point of our titration curve is how you could figure out what the pH is when you go past the equivalence point. When you accidentally overshoot that endpoint of your titration and go a little bit too far, how do you figure out the pH then? Well, the pH is going to be largely determined by the amount of extra hydroxide or hydronium ions in solution. We've learned about how a weak acid or weak base could hydrolyze with water, how the products of our reaction at the equivalence point and beyond can re-react and form extra hydroxide or hydronium. Um, but the amount of hydroxide or hydronium that comes from those reactions is relatively small. And so really it comes from the amount that would come from over titrating. That's the source of our pH. Um, so therefore, you could ignore the hydroxide or hydronium produced at the equivalence point and just focus on that extra acid or base that you added in there to figure out your pH. So you'll figure out how many extra milliliters of strong acid or base you are past the equivalence point. So you'll do the total amount used minus that milliliters to reach the equivalence point. You will do a stoic problem, starting with that extra amount of acid or base, and then use the molarity to convert it into moles. You'll find the moles of acid or base extra hydroxide or hydronium, convert that into a molarity using the total volume of the solution at that point in time. So whatever's in the flask plus whatever you've added from the burette, get the total volume. And then you'll have moles of hydroxide and you'll have a volume of hydroxide so you can get a molarity. And then you can use your molarity to get the pH of your uh, substance. So let's see what this might look like. So it says, using this information, what would the pH of our NH3 hydrochloric acid reaction be if we added 40 milliliters of the 0.012 molar hydrochloric acid to our 20 milliliters of our ammonia. Well, if we added 40 milliliters, and we're trying to figure out how much extra we put in past the equivalence point, we figured out in number 12, if you go back and, and look, we figured out that it would take 30 milliliters to hit the equivalence point in this reaction. So that means that we've accidentally overshot that equivalence point by 10 milliliters. 10 extra milliliters of H3O+. <clears throat> if we want to know the molarity, or excuse me, the moles of the H3O+, we know it's molarity. It told us molarity up here and we know the volume, so we could figure out how many moles of extra H3O plus we put in there. So if we have 10 extra milliliters of H3O plus, for every 1,000 milliliters, we would have 0 0.0120 moles of that H3O plus. And so we're gonna have 0 0.000, one, two, zero moles of H3O plus extra in our flask. Well, that extra H3O plus is really where our pH is coming from. And our pH equations require us to plug in molarities, not just moles. So if we want to know what the molarity is of our H3O plus, we need to take those moles and divide it by our volume. Well, our volume at this point in the titration, we've added 40 milliliters of acid to 20 milliliters of base. Right now, at this point, we have 60 milliliters of solution total. Or, if we change those 60 milliliters into liters, 0 0.06 liters. So that means the molarity of our extra H3O plus is 0 0.002. And then if we want the pH, we would do the negative log of 
above that concentration, 2.699. And it asks us to add this pH to your graph in number two. So 2.699, I'm gonna go all the way back here, way back, 2.699, there it is. 2.699 is our pH when we've added 40 milliliters worth of acid. What we're gonna look at after this is this yucky part of Oh, I have added some acid, but I haven't reached the equivalence point yet. I have excess ammonia, but I've also formed some ammonium ions along the way. I have both of them. So how do I figure out the pH there? That's what we're going to start to figure out how to do next time we're together.